Welcome to Nice and Blunt. I'm Adam Riancho, and these are my quarterback, tight end, and defensive rankings for week six. It's always intended for half PPR leagues on this channel, but before we, be we begin, there are some players who you cannot start that are on by. Chiefs are on by, so no Mahomes, same with Stafford of the Rams, Darnold of the Vikings, and T Tyler Huntley of the Dolphins. Tua remains on IR, but Derek Carr is not expected to play. It looks like Spencer Rattler will get the start, and it looks like Drake May will also get his debut this week in New England. So let's begin at quarterback with number one. I'm going with Jaden Daniels at Baltimore here at the top. The Ravens are a bad defense this year. They rank as the top five matchup against quarterbacks, giving up 19.6 points per game, 304 yards passing with nine touchdowns and only three interceptions. So Jaden Daniels gets a big upgrade. He's already the quarterback two in fantasy this year, averaging 22.3 points per game, four touchdowns, two turnovers, but 60 rushing yards per game and four rushing touchdowns. Jaden's on fire and he'll be unstoppable in this one. It's going to be back and forth in this matchup, and I do think Jaden will play well. In the same game, though, right behind him, I have Lamar Jackson versus Washington, who is the quarterback one in points per game this season with 24.9 on average, with nine passing touchdowns, four turnovers this year, 73 rushing yards per game, and two rushing touchdowns. He is on fire on the ground. Lamar is a lock in the top three every single week. This matchup is also great. It ranks top six against the position. They have been stepping up a little bit lately. They've only given up 142 passing yards over the last two weeks against Arizona and Cleveland. So they have been better, but I still think it's a great matchup. They've given up 11 touchdowns and zero interceptions. They are terrible in the secondary. So Lamar's going to be great. I do think they win this game, but I think Derrick Henry gets involved and Jaden goes toe to toe. Jaden will have better fantasy numbers, but Lamar will win the game in my opinion. Number three though, Jalen Hurts versus Cleveland is only quarterback 12 in scoring this year, but multiple games without his top wide receivers are a big reason why he's only averaging 16.9 points per game. He does give you 41 rushing yards per game with two rushing touchdowns in four games this season. He's off the bye. Everyone is healthy. He gets his top two receivers back. And the only risk with him is if Saquon goes nuclear and scores every touchdown. I don't think that happens. Philadelphia will be fine. The matchup is bottom 10, but I really don't care. They give up the seventh most rushing yards per game allowed. Two quarterbacks, 30 rushing yards on average. So Jalen Hurts will get it going on the ground and AJ Brown, Devontae Smith probably both score touchdowns themselves. So definitely starting Jalen Hurts this week. I think his bounce back to elite status begins this week. Number four, I have Jordan Love versus Arizona who gets a good matchup here. The Cardinals rank tied for top 10, giving up 17.5 points per game to quarterbacks on 225 yards per game passing, six touchdowns, four interceptions, 25 rushing yards per game, and three rushing touchdowns. I'm not too concerned about the rushing stats. Jordan Love rarely offers that, but he gets all his wide receivers back this week, and Arizona will not be able to stop him. This team has looked excellent at home compared to on the road, and even in the Vikings' loss, Love put up massive numbers. Last week was weird without some weapons against the Rams. Weird coaching rivalry between McVay and LaFleur. I'm willing to write that off. Love will play well this week, and I think he's a top five option. I think they score over 30 points against the Cardinals. Number five, another team I think scores well over 30 points, would be Joe Burrow at the Giants. This team is one and four entering Sunday night. Chase and Higgins are going off in this matchup, and the defense sucks. So even if neighbors doesn't play for the giants, Burrow has to compensate for a lack of defense every single week. They're going to score all year long. And regardless of the opponent, Burrow might be top seven at worst. I think he'll crack the top three plenty of times this year. So I was tempted to rank him as high as number three, but I think at number five, he's a lock in your lineup, no matter what. Number six, I have Kirk Cousins at Carolina, and this matchup does rank top seven. The Panthers give up 18.2 points per game, 232 yards per game, 11 passing touchdowns, only three interceptions. Cousins will play well. I don't expect 500 yards every week from him, but in a good matchup off plenty of rest, 
He's going to play well once again. It's Kirk Tober, and this might be a Bijan game on paper, but Cousins is going to play well no matter what. If Kyle Pitts gets going early on, you know for a fact you're in store for an excellent game from Kirk Cousins. London and Mooney are playing well, and that's going to continue all season long. So I trust Cousins. He was a top seven quarterback last year when healthy, and now he's flashing that upside once again. I think it happens in week six. He's my quarterback number six. He should be excellent once more. Number seven, though, I have Kyler Murray at Green Bay. And the only thing weird about this matchup is that the Packers have forced four fumbles to opposing quarterbacks. I doubt it matters for Murray, but this season he is quarterback eight in fantasy, averaging 18.3 points per game with 49 rushing yards per game, only 194 yards passing though but this is a matchup where that could approach 300 he's due for a big game and this could be a shootout so i do think kyler will be fine the floor is very high every week and the upside is fantastic he'll be a lock in your lineup pretty much every single week number eight i have dak prescott versus detroit who gets a top 10 matchup the lions rank tied for 10th giving up 17.5 points per game 276 yards per game passing Four touchdowns, four interceptions, another 29 rushing yards per game, and a rushing touchdown. So I think Prescott will be fine, especially in the passing department. His yards will keep him viable for a high floor. And last year at home against Detroit, he gave you 20.3 fantasy points, 345 yards passing, two touchdowns, only one interception. So I expect a similar performance. I do think he goes over 20 points, and I kind of feel like the top 10 quarterbacks this week will all have great games. He is quarterback 11 in fantasy this season, averaging 17.5 points per game, just like this matchup allows. And he's giving you 285 passing yards per game with eight touchdowns. He has thrown five interceptions, though. That's not great, but he finds a way to win. Last week was impressive, and he will keep this offense competitive in what might turn into an avalanche of scoring by Detroit. The only risk is if he only has like 20 minutes time of possession. We saw that happen against the Giants and that could cap his upside, but I think he's going to be great here. I think the numbers approach 300 yards through the air. Number nine, though, I told you to start Brock Purdy this week, and that looked like a good call. I may be too low in hindsight. His previous four games versus the Seahawks, Purdy was averaging 20.3 points per game. On Thursday, he scored 24.1, and I'm glad I ranked him top 10. He did pay off this week. Number 10, though, I have Josh Allen at the Jets, and this is probably my lowest rank on Josh Allen all year long. It's the matchup that I'm worried about. It ranks number 31, so bottom two here. The Jets only give up 7.9 points per game in fantasy to opposing quarterbacks. That is not a good matchup at all. 161 passing yards per game, only two touchdowns with two interceptions, 15 rushing yards, and two fumbles to quarterbacks this year. You would have expected more picks given how low the points are, but very few touchdowns allowed, and in the second half, they did really get rolling against Sam Darnold. The Jets fired their coach, so there's a lot of motivation to play well. They will be very sharp, and in division, Josh Allen does not play well in this matchup on the road specifically. If you look at the last two years against the Jets in MetLife Stadium, he's only averaging 16.9 points per game, and that's because of 220 yards per game passing, only one touchdown, five interceptions, a fumble as well. So one touchdown, six turnovers, that's atrocious. 61 rushing yards, though, is the saving grace. He also has two rushing touchdowns. So he will get it done from a floor standpoint. You'll get the rushing yards to keep you viable. However, I do worry that without Khalil Shakir or James Cook, neither of them have practiced this week, it will turn into a Josh Allen Superman game. And when he's forced to do too much, he often messes up and has some costly turnovers. So I could easily envision two or three turnovers in this game, and I would be worried that that really impacts his value. I think the ceiling is tremendously capped for Allen this week. His floor is still good for at least 15, 16 points. I think everyone who has Allen is probably still starting him, unless you maybe picked up Kirk Cousins off the wire. But this week, I'm definitely downgrading him. I do not think he is the best play as I normally do. At quarterback number 10, you could consider benching him, but odds are you'll tough it out. I don't think he'll be good. I do think the Jets win this game. So Josh Allen, a big downgrade this week, but he'll be back in the top five 
Don't worry about it. Sooner or later, he'll bounce back. Number 11, I have Baker Mayfield at New Orleans, who also gets a bad matchup. The Saints rank bottom four against the quarterback position, only allowing 10.9 points per game so far this season. So not ideal, but they do give up 268 passing yards per game, only one touchdown allowed and seven interceptions. It could be ugly for Baker. Last year in two games though, against New Orleans, Baker was just fine, averaging 19.6 points per game, 278 passing yards per game, five touchdowns and three interceptions in two games, another 15 rushing yards per game as well. So yes, it's a bad matchup on paper, but I think Mayfield has enough to get it done. The Bucks probably dominate time of possession against a rookie quarterback as well. So the run game might get going, but it doesn't score touchdowns this year. I do think they will score through the air in this matchup. I do trust Baker's floor kind of no matter what. He's played very good this season. And while I'm not convinced he puts up over 20 points, I think the floor is fine. Similar to Josh Allen, at least 16 feels guaranteed. And yeah, maybe Mike Evans is limited, but I still think Godwin goes off and Kate Otten has stepped up. I do think Baker will be fine. He'll probably throw for over 250 and two touchdowns. Number 12, though, I have Caleb Williams versus the Jags, who gets the best matchup you could ask for. Jacksonville ranks number one, giving up 23.2 points per game allowed to opposing quarterbacks, an average of 304 yards passing per game, 10 touchdowns allowed, only three interceptions, an extra 23 rushing yards per game. Even Flacco ran for over 20 yards last week. So Caleb gets a big upgrade. This could be the week where everything clicks for him. And he does look like that truly elite option that we expected coming into the year. The matchup is ideal. But the fact that this game is in London has me pumping the brakes just a little bit. I want to rank him top 10, but at number 12 is as high as I could go. He should be very good, but the Jags have an upper hand with all their experience overseas in London. Maybe Chicago looks bad they did leave early in the week so jet lag is probably not going to be as big of a problem but Doug Peterson is coaching for his job and weird stuff usually happens in London it could be a very low scoring game on the back of the Bears defense so the Jags could show up all of a sudden I doubt it but at number 12 I do think Caleb is a very good streamer a legit start in week six. Number 13, I have Justin Fields at Las Vegas, and I do think he's a good starter as well. At number 13, I do think he's in the safe category. Fields can explode. He has very high upside, but he can also be very mediocre at times. Traveling to Las Vegas, I think this is more of a low scoring game, but the threat of Russell Wilson behind him now that he's healthy is going to keep him sharp. I think he really staves off anyone Calling for Russ to be the starter. I think he will prove why he's the better option. So they're going to move the ball this week. It's just a question of will they settle for field goals or not. And I do think he'll offer some high rushing value. Jalen Warren being healthy does help the offense quite a bit. So his rushing upside is just so valuable. While he wasn't excellent last week, he could drop 30 points and you wouldn't be shocked. Justin Fields, I do think, is worth a start as a legit high-end streamer. This week, number 14, though, I have Jared Goff at Dallas, and I think this is possibly the cutoff point of quarterbacks I'm starting. I think it's just a floor, though. Last year against Dallas, he only gave you 10.8 points, 271 yards passing, one touchdown, two interceptions. But this game likely turns into a shootout. Dallas is really bad at stopping the run, however, and it could be a Montgomery Gibbs game all four quarters. So off the bye, I do think this offense will get rolling. I do think... There is some really high upside, but with the opportunity of scoring only rushing touchdowns this week, Goff could burn you. I think he has a 16-point floor as well. Similar to Baker and Josh Allen, I think he's fine, though. I think from a safety standpoint, Goff should be okay, but maybe doesn't go over 20 points. Number 15, I have CJ Stroud at New England, who I think you should bench this week. I do not feel good about it. This is a bottom 10 matchup. The Patriots only give up 13.5 points per game, 251 yards passing, four touchdowns, two interceptions this season, and Stroud doesn't give you much on the ground. So without Nico Collins, the offense could struggle. It did not look very good last last week, and it's easy to write off the Patriots, but it is a road game for Houston here. There's a 50% chance of rain, and Christian Gonzalez is a good corner. He could definitely slow down 
Stefan Diggs. So Tank Dell really needs to step up. He has not played well this season, and it could be rough for Stroud. With Mixon back healthy, the offense should be okay, but they might lean on the run as well, especially if they're leading early in the game. They'll probably just try and kill the clock, get out of Foxborough as quickly as possible, especially if it's raining. So this season, Stroud only ranks his quarterback 14 in points per game, and I think he gets a downgrade this week. So I only have a number 15. I do not think he is a good play, and I don't think you have to start him if you got him. Number 16, though, is where I have Geno Smith. He drops down one spot because I bumped up Justin Fields now that I know he's the starter. Coming into Thursday, though, I did rank him 15. And I was saying you should probably bench him. His previous four games against the Niners, he only averaged 11.4 points. He scored 12.5 on Thursday. And despite his 18.2 point per game average entering week six, I did tell you to bench him. That looks like a good call, but I might be a little too high when the week is all over. At number 16, he'll probably finish outside the top 20. Number 17 and 18, though, back to back, I do have the combo of Anthony Richardson and and Joe Flacco, depending on who is the starter. This is where I would rank them at QB 17. It looks like Richardson will start. He was full in practice on Thursday, but then he was limited on Friday. He's now questionable entering the week. I don't think he misses the game. I think he will suit up, but I don't feel good about it. Both Michael Pittman and Jonathan Taylor are not expected to play, and Richardson often makes mistakes. Tennessee allows the fourth most rushing yards per game, though, 32.3 per per game on average and league average is 20. So Richardson should have some high rushing value in this matchup, but last season in 22 snaps against them, he only had 4.4 fantasy points, no touchdowns, 98 passing yards, nothing like elite, although he did get hurt before the game was over. So I'm not that excited to start him. I really want to see him play a full game before I start him. I worry that he could get hurt again, that oblique injury could crop up again, and they might put in Flacco mid-game if it does. So I do worry about his chances to actually finish the game. Plus, it's not a good matchup. Tennessee is coming off a bye, and their secondary is really good. So I do worry about it. Without those weapons especially, we know that Richardson struggles to throw the ball consistently, and he could have a lot of misfires in this one. So I think there's a very low floor for Richardson, but the rushing value is still tempting. I expect about 15 points from whichever quarterback does get the start. I do think they're both equally as valuable this week. So if Flacco does get the start, make the pivot. But at quarterback 17, I don't think you have to start the Colts starter this week. Number 19, though. I have... Aaron Rodgers versus Buffalo, and the Bills have forced four fumbles against opposing quarterbacks. So maybe it's five with Rodgers, but coming off a three interception game, that's very rare for Rodgers. I think he will look very sharp, especially with the coach being fired, Hackett being demoted. I think this offense will look a lot better. He's at least motivated to play well. I think his reputation's kind of on the line. Now there are no excuses. If they lose, it's all on Rodgers. So he's got his back against the wall and I do think he steps up this looks like a better matchup for Brees Hall though so we'll see if he pads the stats with a bunch of checkdowns to the running back I'm not sure if they trade for Adams at all let alone before this matchup so not expecting that to happen if it would I'd bump him up a little bit but so far this year he's only averaging 13.6 points per game he's flashed some upside but he's also flashed some heavy risk I think he's only viable in a two quarterback league no thank you in one quarterback leagues. Number 20 though, kind of the last um, super flex starter I'm really dying to plug in would be Daniel Jones versus Cincinnati. The matchup is top four. The Bengals have a terrible defense. They've given up 10 passing touchdowns, only three interceptions. And they also allow 33 rushing yards per game. That is the second most per game allowed to the quarterback position across the league. So love that for Daniel Jones. His rushing value has not really shown up this season. He has kind of been limited in terms of running it. However, without Malik Neighbors, he might need to step up once again. We're not quite sure if Neighbors will play. It's not looking great at the moment, but it is still possible. If that does happen, I'll, I will bump up Jones, but this season he's actually quarterback 17 in points per game with 14.9 on average, and I do think you're getting about 15, 14 or so points from him, most likely. I do think he's interesting in the top 20, but um, until Neighbors gets the start, I'm not willing to bump him up 
inside the top 15. If it does happen, I think I'd rather go Daniel Jones than CJ Stroud this week. I actually actually feel that way. Number 21, I have Andy Dalton versus Atlanta, and the Falcons do give up the most rushing yards to quarterbacks, 41 per game, but it's kind of irrelevant for Dalton, who doesn't really run around. He's averaging 14.7 points per game, and the Falcons don't really scare you on defense that much, but this offense has a cap ceiling. I'll pass. I don't think Dalton will be great. Number 22, I have Justin Herbert at Denver, and the matchup is bottom five. Herbert only averages 10.4 points per game this season, and his foot injury has been a factor. So we're just hoping that he's healthy. The tackles are at least healthy, but this offense usually just gets rolling in the run game, and this secondary is not one I want to test. They've caught five interceptions so far this season. So no thanks with Herbert. I do think they win the game, but in his previous four games against Denver, he's only averaging 15 points per game. Nothing ideal from this matchup. So no thanks with Herbert. Right behind him, I have Bo Nix in the same game, who also gets a bottom five matchup. The Chargers only give up 11 points per game to the position, and they have caught four interceptions in four games. So this will be a very low scoring game, a tight matchup in division rivalry, not expecting a lot of points. Knicks is only averaging 13.7 points per game this season. And without some rushing value, he was really a very unsafe bet. So no thank you with either quarterback in this game. I will pass. And I'm also going to pass on Trevor Lawrence at Chicago in London this week. It's the worst matchup possible. The Bears only allow 7.6 points per game to the position and six interceptions probably increases. Lawrence is not that trustworthy. This offense does scare me, but it is in London. Evan Ingram does come back. There is some upside potential, but in such a bad matchup, I'm going to pass. I think Lawrence is not a safe play against Chicago. Number 25, though, I have Spencer Rattler versus Tampa Bay, and I'm tempted to rank him higher. It's actually a top two matchup, but kind of wasted on this rookie quarterback. There's way too much risk making his debut. He's a fifth round pick playing in division. I do really worry about it. I expect Todd Bowles to dial up some blitzes and cause some problems for Rattler. So not excited. There is some potential, but until we see it, you really have no idea what you're getting. I'll pass on the gamble with Rattler this week. Number 26, I got Will Levis versus the Colts, and this matchup is also great for him. It ranks top three. The Colts have allowed 280 passing yards per game, eight touchdowns, three interceptions, another two rushing touchdowns and 24 rushing yards per game. So you're hoping for some rushing upside here. Maybe Calvin Ridley gets going, but it could easily turn into a Mason Rudolph game. Like if he gets benched at halftime, no one's going to be shocked with Will Levis. While he does have some upside in this matchup, he probably has at least two turnovers as well. And that negates kind of all of the upside. One of those touchdowns will get nullified. So no thank you with Levis. I'm just never going to test my luck with him. Number 27 though. I'm interested to watch Drake May versus Houston, but I'm not going to start him in fantasy. The Texans allow the sixth most rushing yards per game though, 32 per game. And May is pretty mobile. I do think that increases his floor, but he's making his debut. I really think there's going to be a lot of mistakes here. There's a lot of risk with some turnover potential. I would just rather pass on May. He is on the watch list. However, if he gives you like 60 rushing yards, I think he's a definite top 20 quarterback moving forward. Number 28, I have Deshaun Watson at Philadelphia and the matchup does rank top 10, but Deshaun is just terrible. I think you also get terrible karma. If you do start him, I think you're destined to fail. If you bet, on Deshaun Watson. Last starting quarterback ranked though would be Aiden O'Connell versus Pittsburgh and the matchup does rank top bottom 10. There's no Devontae Adams, even Jacoby Myers might not play. Really, there's no upside here and you never know Gardner Minshew could get slotted back in at halftime O'Connell could get benched. So no thanks there. At number 30 though, I will mention Mason Rudolph who might play in this game as well this week. It wouldn't shock me if Levis gets benched. So those are my quarterback rankings. Let's move on to tight end where there's also players that are not ranked in this video due to the buy. Travis Kelsey, Noah Gray of the Chiefs are not ranked. Neither is Colby Parkinson or Johnny Smith. And TJ Hawkinson is on buy as well, but he did practice last week and it's possible he returns in week seven. But for now, you still cannot start him. Let's get going, though. At number one, I'm going with Brock Bowers versus Pittsburgh. And Bowers is the heartbeat of the Raiders offense. This is not a good team, though, but you can bet on a shit ton of volume going his way. I think he finds the end zone again, but probably doesn't outscore George Kittle. I probably ranked Kittle 
one spot too low. But number two is where I did rank Kittle here. I did tell you he was a must start entering Thursday. I thought he'd score a touchdown. I didn't expect two, however. He's a lock now for tight end one on the week. Number three, though, I have Jake Ferguson versus Detroit, and he's been extremely consistent this season, averaging eight and a half points per game on seven and a half targets, five and a half catches, 57 yards per game, but no touchdowns. So the floor is good for eight and a half, and you will take that proudly. He is bust proof at this point. And last year, he was the most targeted tight end in the red zone. Inevitably, he will score touchdowns. So definitely start him. He's a lock in your lineup every week. He'll be top five rest of season. Number four, though, I have Trey McBride at Green Bay, and the matchup is top eight. The Packers give up 10.2 points per game two opposing tight ends, 5.8 catches per game, 49 yards per game, and two touchdowns this season. So that's what you're hoping for. McBride, just like Ferguson, has not scored a touchdown either this year, but the concussion has been the only thing that has slowed him down. The touchdown will inevitably hit, but without it, the floor is 7.8 points this season. In the games he has finished, he is just as valuable as Jake Ferguson. Number five, though, in the same game, I have Tucker Craft versus Arizona, and Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, are both healthy, should play this week. However, Luke Musgrave was placed on IR. So Kraft is going to be a weekly top 10 tight end at the worst moving forward for at least a month. He is in your lineup. And with his recent upside, I feel like you could rank him top three, but he likely falls down to earth at some point. He has three touchdowns over the last two games, but without it, he is still scoring nine and a half points per game on just yards and catches alone. So the floor is very high. I want to see it one more time in terms of the touchdown ceiling, but I was very tempted to rank him in the same tier as Kittle and Bowers this week. At number five, though, he's a must start. I think it's a legitimate conversation if you'd rather start Kraft, McBride, or Ferguson the most this week. So you're definitely starting Kraft if you pick them up off of waivers. Number six, I have Dalton Kincaid at the Jets, and Shakir is not expected to play. James Cook has not practiced either. So Kincaid is the obvious candidate to step up, but he was also the obvious candidate last week and didn't do much, only two catches for 34 yards on six targets. So he has not been the elite tight end I expected entering the year, but he's still someone you're starting. The volume will be there with all the other injuries on offense this week. Number seven, I have Sam Laporta at Dallas, and he has not scored a touchdown yet, but is averaging 5.2 points per game. That ranks his tight end 15. So five points is kind of the floor that you are getting with any of the random tight ends ranked later. And at some point, Laporta will score a touchdown. He should be well rested off the bye and fully healthy. I think at some point they will get him going and it probably happens this week in a shootout. So I'm still starting him, but until we see like that true ceiling, I can't rank him top five at number seven, though. He is a lock in your lineup unless you picked up Tucker Craft. Number eight, I have Kyle Pitts at Carolina, and this matchup does rank tied for number five this season. The Panthers allow 10.7 points per game to the tight end position, 5.2 catches per game, 57 yards per game, and two touchdowns. Not a bad spot at all. If Kyle Pitts can string along two good games, then he'll probably be a must start top 10 tight end every week for the rest of the year. But he's also still capable of putting up a bagel like he did two weeks ago. Cousins does look like he found a groove though, but Pitts is not a top two target on this team still. And while he did earn some trust after last week's game, I still expect to get burned a few more times from him this season. For now though, I think you're lighting him up. You kind of have to after last week. Number nine, I have Evan Ingram at Chicago, who is still questionable, but I do expect to play. There is plenty of optimism. He will suit up. Doug Peterson sounds kind of confident that will happen, but it's still possible he doesn't play. So it's an early morning London game. You will have to wake up before 930 Eastern time kickoff and check if he's inactive. Get him out of your lineup if that's the case. But if he plays, I do think he's a top 10 play this week. Jalen Johnson will be all over Brian Thomas, and there will be some opportunity for someone else needing to step up. He has been hurt this year, not played well when he was available, but he could easily be a top three tight end in targets per game this season now that he's back. So I still think he has a high floor. If the injury is behind him, he'll probably look similar to what we got from him last year. He was fantastic. So I'm still trusting Evan Ingram, but because we haven't seen it this year, I am lowering him a little bit at tight end nine though. I think you're starting him number 10. I think you're also starting Dallas Goddard versus the 
Browns this week. He's the tight end two in points per game this season with an average 10.5 per game. But the majority of that success is tied to AJ Brown and Devontae Smith missing time. And those two players are healthy now. So he reverts back to a fringe top 10 or 12 tight end. Yeah, there's some upside, but he's still the fourth weapon on his team. And there's just not always enough volume to go around. So now that those receivers are healthy, he just doesn't have the same upside. Tight end 10 is kind of where he was entering the year. Number 11, I have Pat Fryermuth at Las Vegas, who is currently tight end seven in points per game this season with an average of 7.9. He has back-to-back -back games with a touchdown. 4.6 targets per game, four catches per game, 35 yards per game is about a five and a half point floor. And that's kind of all you can ask for if you're just trying to avoid a bagel and you don't get a touchdown five six points is the safety net zone so that's a safe floor that's what keeps him viable six points is all you can really ask for to stay afloat at the position if he does score a touchdown though you're very happy number 12 however i have cole Komet versus jacksonville he has the potential to go off any week, Jacksonville's defense is bad this year, but there's still too many mouths to feed to really feel comfortable starting Komet every week. He is the tight end eight in points per game, though, this season with an average of 7.7. And just like Fryermuth, you could do a lot worse. And the floor is safe enough to keep him likely top 15 at the worst. So hoping for some upside, but without the touchdown, he probably won't finish top 10. At number 12, though, you're probably only starting him in a deeper format. Number 13, I have Mark Andrews versus Washington, who is really falling down the ranks since the beginning of the year. But last week, he did have four catches for 55 yards. He was terrible the two weeks before and still no touchdowns for him on the season. Likely scored twice last week. Even Charlie Kolar caught a touchdown, so really not ideal to watch. Maybe he's just a decoy in the red zone now. I don't feel confident betting on his ceiling. So he's not the player you expected when you drafted him. Likely's presence makes him too risky to rank top 10. I don't think you have to start Andrews at all. Number 14, I have David Njoku at Philadelphia, and there is upside with him, but this is two seasons now where playing with Deshaun Watson completely destroys his fantasy value. Until we get Jameis Winston at quarterback, I don't think Njoku is a safe start. I do not expect to rank him at top 10 until that happens. Number 15, I got Cade Otten at the Saints, and the matchup actually ranks top 11. New Orleans gives up 9.3 points per game to the position, 5.8 catches for 64 yards per game. So really interesting floor here, especially with the down game expected for Mike Evans. Auden has a opportunity to step up, but in four games against the Saints in his career, he has a maximum 28 yards per in any game, but he also has two touchdowns. I don't think he's the worst bet if you're just chasing touchdowns. He's obviously touchdown dependent, but I actually think the odds of that happening are somewhat high in this game. They will need to rely on someone other than Evans, who usually gets shut down against Lattimore in New Orleans. So Otten, top 15, a viable streamer if you are desperate. Number 16 though, I have Zach Ertz at Baltimore and the matchup ranks top five. The Ravens have given up 6.6 .6 catches per game to se for 74 yards per game to the position. That's an average of 10.7 points per game with zero touchdowns. So the floor should be high in this matchup. Ertz has zero touchdowns this season, so you're not expecting that from him in the first place, and this doesn't look like the matchup for that to change, but he does give you an average of 4.9 points per game. That's a five-point floor that keeps him bust-proof. I do think he'll play even better than that. Ertz is actually kind of interesting. I'm just not expecting a touchdown from him. Number 17, though, I have Tyler Conklin versus Buffalo, who is questionable, limited in practice this week, but is expected to play on Monday. Conklin has been just as safe as last year for an average of 5.3 points per game. Still no touchdowns this season, but the position has so many landmines this year. He's good enough to avoid a bagel pretty safely. So if that's all you're asking for at tight end 17, you could do worse. But this is probably the cutoff point of guys I would consider streaming at tight end. Number 18, I still have Isaiah Likely in my sights. However, he's very touchdown dependent. He did score two last week, and he is now tight end five in points per game this year with 8.8, .8. but it's really all on the back of two games. Otherwise, he's been brutal, and I do not trust him as much as a guy like Tucker Kraft because the tight end room is still crowded with Andrews on the field. So likely is borderline droppable. I get it if you have dropped him already. I also understand if no one has picked him up, even if he is available, I do not trust likely 
at all. Number 19, I do have Dalton Schultz at New England. And with no Nico Collins, it does make him interesting. But now we're just chasing touchdowns for the most part. And Schultz is not the best bet. He has not played that well this year. Number 20, though, I have Theo Johnson versus the Bengals. And the matchup does rank top four. The Bengals just gave up three touchdowns to tight ends last week against Baltimore. So on paper, it's a good matchup. But I'm only interested here because last week he caught all five of his targets for 48 yards while Neighbors was out. And Neighbors might not play again. Theo could capitalize. But the touchdown feels unlikely. I think it could be a fluke in terms of matchup stats for the Bengals against tight ends. So not interested to start, but am putting him on the watch list. Theo Johnson could get enough volume to keep him viable. The floor is interesting this week. Number 21 through 25, I'm just going to show you on the screen. I have Okonkwo followed by Hunter Henry, followed by Noah Fant, Gesicki, and Juwan Johnson. The matchup is good for Okonkwo, but you're really just hoping for a touchdown. Hunter Henry is interesting to watch with Drake May, but I'll pass. Noah Fant was better than I expected. He had six catches for 63 yards on Thursday, but with a low track record, hard to trust. Same applies with Gesicki and Juwan Johnson. Could really burn you easily. So let's move on to defense and wrap up this video. Let's go quickly. I have the Steelers at number one this week against Las Vegas. They've lost two in a row and they get Aiden O'Connell at quarterback. Adams is not expected to play. Zamir White and Jacoby Myers both have mispracticed on Wednesday and Thursday and the Steelers are a lock in your lineup. Number two, I have the Texans at the Patriots and rookie Drake May making his debut with Ramondre Stevenson likely out. The offense is still bad and there will be plenty of turnovers to capitalize on the Texans get a big upgrade. Number three and four, I have the Chargers and the Broncos back to back here. They're both must starts in my opinion. It should be a very low scoring game, a lot of defense. I think LA wins, so that's why I rank them higher off a bye versus a rookie quarterback. They should be a very good play, but the Broncos are an excellent play as well. They're at home, so they'll put up a good fight. Chargers offense is not elite, but the tackles are healthy and they can can still run the ball pretty well. So low scoring game, but Denver, I think will lose. That's why I prefer the chargers straight up. Number five, I have the bucks at the, at the saints and Spencer Rattler making his debut in division Tampa Bay defense. While it's not great, I do think Todd Bowles will dial up the blitz and give Spencer Rattler a lot of problems. There is some pick six potential and a lot of turnovers should happen. So bucks in division should be a top five play this week. And number six, I have the Eagles versus Cleveland. Anyone facing Deshaun Watson is always a good start. At defense, Eagles get a big upgrade. Off a bye, they should be good at home. Number seven, I have the Falcons at Carolina. And the Panthers-Dalton honeymoon phase is over. This team is still pretty bad. The mini bye week for the Falcons allows them to rest up. They should be fully healthy. And in a matchup like this, I do think they warrant a top 10 rank. Number eight, I have the Bears versus Jacksonville. And Chicago is extremely talented on defense. So they're a legit play every week. But in London, I got a weird feeling about it. I do think the Jags could play well. The Bears defense plays a lot better at home. And Jacksonville usually has an advantage in this environment. Evan Ingram is also going to help their offense. So that's why I don't rank the Bears like top five this week. But I still think their top 10, the floor, should be safe. Number nine, I have the Colts at Tennessee. And anytime you face off against Will Levis, you get an upgrade. So even a bad defense like the Colts is a top 10 play this week, probably a low scoring game in division, not the shootout we just saw in Jacksonville. So high pick six potential, very high upside with the Colts. Anytime you face Will Levis, I think you want to start that defense. Number 10 is where I ranked the Niners heading into Thursday. And I thought Seattle would move the ball, but San Francisco did catch two interceptions and rattled Geno again. They gave you a decent floor. I think this rank will look pretty solid when the week is over. Number 11, I have the Titans versus the Colts and Richardson could make plenty of mistakes as well, but maybe they protect him with play calling. Pittman and Taylor are out though, and the offense could struggle. So Tennessee should keep it close off a of bye. They will be a tough out. And I do think they're a legit play against Richardson, not as legit against Flacco if that happens. Number 12, I have the Raiders versus the Steelers. And Las Vegas, their defense is not atrocious, although they were torched by Carolina. I think they'll be okay in this matchup. They will not take the Steelers for granted. And the Pittsburgh offense is nothing to really fear that much. So Las Vegas has a decent floor this week. I don't think they're the worst start you could find. Number 13, I have the Saints versus Tampa, and without Carr, their defense really needs to step up. They should limit Mike Evans, but otherwise, I'm not so sure. They're a meh play, but a decent 
streamer. At defense number 13, you could start them in a deep league. Number 14, though, I have the Jets versus Buffalo, followed by the Bills in the same game right behind them. And the Jets have the talent to be a top 10 play this week. I do actually think that Allen will turn it over a lot trying to play Superman, especially without Shakir and James Cook. It is a decent bet for the Jets, but Josh Allen can also always find a way to win. And that does make it kind of risky. I think the Bills keep it tight though, and I think the floor is decent for both options. I will take the Jets to win, so that's the tiebreaker in my opinion. Buffalo cannot stop the run, so Brees Hall should go off, and maybe the Bills do give up a lot of points against the Jets. We'll find out, but I think both of them are top 15 this week. Number 16 though, I have the Jaguars at Chicago, and the Bears offense is getting better, but could easily lay an egg in London. Jags are a sneaky play. I do actually think they might win the game on Sunday. Number 17 though, I have the Patriots versus Houston and the Texans are not at full strength and at home the Pats should get a spark with their rookie quarterback. I'll pass though, I think the ceiling is very low. Number 18, I have the Seahawks versus San Francisco entering Thursday. This is where I ranked them and they did give up 36 points. So this rank is still probably too high. I did tell you to bench him though, but this is probably not low enough. Number 19, I have the Lions at Dallas and it's a potential shootout. Detroit has a leaky secondary though. So even off the bye, I will pass. Packers at 20, high shootout potential even at home against Arizona. No, thank you. Number 21, I got the Cowboys versus Detroit and the Cowboys cannot stop the run. So Montgomery and Gibbs will go ham, not starting them. Ravens at 22 versus the Commanders. They have a terrible defense this year. No, thank you. Probably a shootout. Number 23, Cardinals will lose to Jordan Love, who probably dominates them. So nope with the Cardinals. Browns at 24, I might be too low on, but I think the defense is going to start to throw in the towel sooner or later if Watson fails to score more than 15 points every week. And against the Eagles off a bye, I think the Eagles will put up over 30 points. So no thank you with Cleveland. And the Bengals and Giants game, I think, is a very high scoring one. Neither defense is impressive. And uh, Bengals defense is terrible. So even against uh, bad Giants offense, no thanks. Bengals offense is great. So I'm not starting the Giants defense. And then these last two are fuck no's for me. Panthers versus Falcons. Cousins could throw for another 500 yards, possibly. And then the Commanders at Baltimore. Lamar and Derrick Henry cannot be stopped. So you're not starting anyone outside the top 15. I think they are dead weight in your lineup. So those are my top 20 rankings here on the screen for all three positions. I actually feel like there's a lot of good quarterbacks this week. I think all the way through Jared Goff at 14, I think you're getting a very high floor, at least 16 points from these quarterbacks, I would be comfortable starting all of them. I would expect elite games though, from the top five or six, I think all the way through Kirk Cousins, you will definitely go over 20 points. And it's possible that happens with even Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott. We know it happened with Purdy, Josh Allen, and Baker Mayfield could do it as well. Caleb gets a great matchup also. So really high upside with some quarterbacks. I think once you pass Daniel Jones, however, the floor is kind of non-existent. And only in two quarterback leagues would I consider starting the top 20. But starting with Dalton, I will pass. And at tight end, I feel really good about the top five. Kincaid through Cole Komet, though, are probably the only ones you're like interested in starting. The floor is interesting. You're hoping for a touchdown. But if not, if you're streaming the position, then look for a guy like Kate Otten or Zach Ertz in some good matchups. There is some touchdown potential. And you will definitely not get a bagel with them. But at defense, I think all the way through the Raiders, you're getting a decent floor, good matchups for these teams and uh, good situations, a good week to be streaming defense in my opinion. But that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you next time. My name is Adam Riancho and thank you for watching. Nice and blunt.